Here we're going to talk about relaxed dimensions. A relaxed dimension temporarily becomes inactive, allowing the object it dimensions to move freely. So exactly how do we do that within a sketch? Let's go ahead and open this sketch. And let's go ahead and look up at the solve group. And we notice we have relaxed dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And I'm going to hover over. And I'm going to go over onto this arc center and I'm going to select with my left mouse button, click hold and try to drag it and move it. And notice that I can't. I'm going to go up to relax dimensions, select on it. I'm going to do the same thing now. I'm going to click hold and drag. And notice now certain dimensions are changing. A relaxed dimension can be identified by the magenta color. Also, any previously relaxed dimension can be recognized with the approximate equal sign as shown within these dimensions here. Now when I'm done moving around to where I want to place this approximately, I just go ahead and let go of my left mouse button and notice now that the 197.3 dimension which used to be 210, is now changed. It has an approximate number, and we have to change that to make it a whole number. To do that, make sure that the Relax Dimensions button is toggled off, and we can left mouse button double click, and we can place that with a 200 value in the distance, select Enter, and then select anywhere else to set the dimension. Now when you have dimensions on your model, that have approximate values, you have to go and change those to a whole number. Here we're going to talk about a work region feature. Now a work region within a sketch limits the what portions of a sketch should be evaluated by the solver. So basically we're going to only work on a certain portion of the sketch without affecting any of the other parts of the sketch. So let's go ahead and open up this sketch here. And if we take a look, we notice that there are some areas that are not defined yet. And how we can tell is I can go in and I can select on this slot here and I'm going to move it. And notice that these brown lines can be moved where the black ones are set and they cannot be. So let's go ahead and hit Control Z to place the slot back where it belongs. And next we're going to go up to the Solve group and under Options we'll find Work Region. Let's go ahead and select on that. And here we're going to define the region. Or under Region Definition we're going to select the objects. So let's go ahead and I'm going to select this one up here. And you have to select all the lines within that particular shape. And when you're done, let's go ahead and select OK. And now notice in our sketch, the other lines are basically grayed out and cannot be affected by what we change with the lines that we selected. Now we've created a work region. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And here we can begin to add dimensions and change the shape of things of just these two shapes within the sketch. So if I go ahead and select on that slot end and let's go ahead and make that 30 and press enter and I'm going to select away so that then it is set and then also now we see that we're kind of impeding on these sketch lines here so we can also select this line here and this axis line and notice here I get an approximate so we have to make sure that that is a whole number. So I'm going to place in 225 and move it back up. 
and I'll select over to the side and notice now that our line is no longer brown it is black and it is set within the drawing and fully defined now we can do the same thing to this shape as well up here The Sweep Along Guide command allows you to sweep a section string along a guide string. It is located in the Surface Tab Base Group More Sweep Gallery. With two selection steps, first step is to pick the section string. The second step is to pick the guide string. In this case, we have a set of edges that are not tangents, so the best option to select them is a method called chaining. I'll click on More in the top border bar, activate Chain Between, and click OK to dismiss the Options dialog. Then, where you pick determines the direction of the chaining, so I'll pick the right side of this edge and the left side of this edge, and all the edges between will also be selected. You can define offsets for the sweep, but I'll leave them defined as zero. For Boolean, I'm going to set it to Unite. A reference set allows you to control what objects in a part file display in an assembly. As you start creating more complex models, you'll likely have a lot of construction objects in your part file such as datums, sketches, curves, sheet bodies, and so forth. When you add a part file to an assembly, you typically want only the solid body to display. You can include other objects in the reference set if you need, and you can have multiple reference sets. Creating a reference set is straightforward. Select Assemblies tab, Reference Sets. You will immediately notice that there are three reference sets listed on the dialog. By default, part files you create will have these sets. Model contains only the solid body, Empty contains nothing, and entire part contains everything. This is very useful, so you may not even need to create a reference set as you can simply use the one named model. If you have additional objects such as tool solids, you may need to verify the correct one is used in the reference set. Select a reference set in the list, and the objects contained in it highlight in the graphics window. It's also worth pointing out that legacy part files that are older than when these default reference sets were implemented may not have them, or may have a different reference set. Solid was commonly used by many users. I'll demonstrate creating a reference set by clicking on Add New Reference Set. You are then prompted to select an object. I'll set Type Filter to Curve and add the green curves. I'll then enter Wireframe for reference set name and press enter. The properties button displays properties for the reference set. Here you can define attributes that are associated with the reference set. You can also modify an existing reference set by first selecting it in the list. I'll select model, then set type filter to sheet body and select the green ring to add. You can suppress components similar to the way you suppress features in a model. Suppress components are then excluded from assembly operations such as weight and clearance analysis. The command to suppress components can be found in Assemblies tab More Component Gallery. You can either pick the component first, then select a command, or select a command after which you are prompted to pick the component. A suppress component then displays in the assembly navigator grayed out with a dotted checkbox in front of it. It is important to understand that the checkbox on the assembly navigator does not work in the same way as the checkbox on the part navigator which controls the suppression of features. A projected view is one that is projected from an existing view. It is a logical next step after creating a base view, which is why you are immediately prompted to create projected views after creating a base view.
However, you can create a projected view at any time by selecting the command from the Home tab in the View group, or by right-clicking a view on the Part Navigator, or by right-clicking the border of a view in the Graphics window. The preview displays already snap to align with the view you selected the command from at every 45 degrees. The hinge line is inferred, but you can define it using the vector option. The reverse projected direction option reverses the projection from what you have defined in the preferences. It's normal to use the same projection as a standard, so I doubt you'll ever use this option. Associative means that the view will be associative to the hinge line of the original view. Simply click to place the view. You can then continue to add projected views to the same view, change the view in the first selection step, or close the You can add a section view to a drawing sheet by either selecting the command from the Home tab in the View group or from the pop-up menu for a view. I'll pick this projected view as the parent view and select Add Section View from the pop-up menu. A dialog displays. The parent is already defined as the view I invoked the command from. Notice a preview of the section line displays as I move the cursor in the graphics window. The selection step to define the section line segment is highlighted. I'll pick a point in the center to locate the origin and the preview is locked to that position, but still freely rotates. Before placing the view, be sure the settings are what you want. You can access the settings from the pane on the dialog or by right-clicking and selecting Settings from the pop-up menu. The first node, Common, contains Common View Settings. The view label sheet is where you can define the letter of the section view. The next node, section, contains those specific to section views. And section line contains the properties of the section line. At this point, I'll orient it vertically and pick to place the view to the right. This was a simple section view. There may be occasions to create multiple segments in the section line. The datum feature symbol is very similar to a note and is also located in the annotation group of the PMI tab. Most of the panes and options should look familiar as they are the same as for dimensions and notes. I'll start by setting the orientation in the leader pane notice the default type is datum. Next is a datum identifier. I'll now create a leader by picking an edge location, holding, and dragging away. Before placing it, I'll select the selection step in the associated objects pane. Notice the edge I picked for the leader is inferred. I'll hold the shift key to deselect it and pick these two planar faces. I'll then select the Specify Location Selection step and place the Datum Feature Symbol. Notice the Datum Identifier is now B. This iterates as you create Datum Feature Symbols. If you do need to create a traditional drawing using the drafting application, you can display existing PMI objects in the drafting views. In this example, there are two primary views to display on the drawing. I'll make each the work view so we can see the PMI objects in each. There's the front view and the right view. There's also a trimetric view which includes all of the PMI objects as well as this note which displays parallel to the screen. I will now activate the drafting application and I'm prompted to create a sheet. I'll click OK and the View Creation Wizard displays. I'll accept the default options then display the inherit PMI sheet. Here I'll activate From Model View. 
For orientation, I'll use the front view as the parent view. And for layout, I'll also activate the right view. Notice the inherited dimensions, datum feature symbols, and feature control frames. Next, I'll move these two views. and import a base view, selecting Trimetric, setting the scale, and clicking Settings to display the Settings dialog. On the PMI sheet is the same option that was available on the View Creation Wizard. Setting this to From Model View would display all the PMI objects in the Trimetric view. However, I only want to display the note. Setting this to Aligned to Drawing view only will display only the note since it is the only PMI object defined to display parallel to the screen. I'll click OK to close the settings dialog and place the view and the note as the only PMI object that displays. It's important to understand that you are simply displaying the PMI objects in the drafting views. You cannot modify them in drafting.